against uh, a very good player, uh, Simbat Lopetian, who was very positional. And uh, this was Armenian Championship, and I was playing black. And uh, at that time, I was playing Grunfeld, something that uh, I play often even now. And my opponent played the classical Alekhin variation. The knight comes out of e2. A very flexible variation. And at that moment, there was a fashionable line to play with knight on c6 without c5. A strange type of uh, opening. But uh, it was very similar to kind of hybrid of Grunfeld and King's Indian. And I will show it to you. So he went castle, e5, bishop a3, rook e8, uh, d5. This was uh, an unusual move at that moment because uh, bishop f7 was the main theory back then. King 7 queen b3, then you had some games with king f6, f4, bishop h6. <laughs> Crazy. <laughs> well, it was a lot of fun for me uh, to play this line. So in the game he went d5. I went uh, knight a5 and bishop d3. So a typical way, uh, has, if he hadn't played uh, bishop a3 and play d5 immediately, would be to play knight a5, bishop d3, and b6. Uh, what black is basically trying to do, he's trying to, if white goes c4, to play c5, and then bring the knight to d6 from b7, and f5, f4, and start the king's Indian business here. Yes. Trying to mate. Or, even sometimes, you know, not to play c5, play knight b7 and try to play for dark squares, exchange the dark bishops. So, just to explain my decision on the next move. So when he played here, I started thinking, I said, I can play b6, uh, I can play, uh, okay, also c6, of course. But I thought, why not to play bishop f8? If he exchanges the bishops, then uh, I can slowly bring my knight to c5. And f4, I thought, I'll manage somehow. I will control the dark squares, which is a bit optimistic, but <laughs> I was 18 years old. And, of course, the main issue here, if you look at the position, is bishop b4. You don't want to play b6 and have weak pawns. But then I thought, I'll just go c5. Hmm. Bishop f5, queen a5. I have two bishops in a wonderful position. And this is what happened. He played bishop b4, c5, bishop a5, queen a5. And I thought to myself, what's wrong with my opponent? He doesn't understand. What's going on? And then he went a4. And I started thinking. The more I was thinking, the more I was understanding that I've just been fooled. Because I have two bishops. And it seems that I will slowly play bishop d6, f5. Yeah. But this bishop has no squares to go. So even, you know, if I manage to play a5, he can always take, play here, and then bring his knight to e3. So without the knight, there is not much point to my position. And white, he can improve the position by just slowly shuffling, bringing his knight to c4. I can never afford to bring out the bishop here. Because once the bishops are exchanged, it's even worse with the knight on c4. Yeah. So now I started thinking and I said, oh my god, this is just bad for me. This is a very difficult position. Although it visually looks, the black has managed to get two bishops and get the complete control of the d6 square. Yeah. 
Uh, of course, I was thinking about some sacrifices at this moment, you know, just to activate the bishop, but it just uh, doesn't really bring a relief because white still slowly develops. And yeah, this was kind of a lesson that uh, some things that seem obvious are, you know, you got to understand that this position, because of bad bishop on c8, black is just slightly worse. So I've tried to, I think I've played uh, some bishop d6 here, or, yeah, so something like this. He slowly shuffled, uh, yeah, he played queen c2, rook f8, king h1. What he basically tries to do is to bring the knight. I went f5 because uh, I didn't see any other moves. EFGF. F4, E4, and Bishop, C4. I managed to, <laughs> once again, draw the game, as I often did, because I was very resourceful, although my understanding wasn't great, but I think I played something like this. It was Rook, F2, then Queen, D8, Knight, F1. The Knight got to E3. My position was difficult, and... Uh, this was a very valuable lesson. Although it seemed to me from the start that this bishop is not good, and my bishop is great, I started understanding this sort of positions that when you don't have a knight to blockade, uh, it, the bishops, uh, when your opponent has a knight, the bishops are generally uh, not so good. Because, for example, if had we had this position but, and also the, the big difference that it makes, of course, is that the pawn is here. Had the pawn been on c4 and I didn't have the square, maybe it's still slightly better for white, but not a big deal. Or if white had uh, like a bishop, then this, this wouldn't be so bad. Those that don't know me, I'm international master Ivanka Hauska, and uh, it's a great pleasure to be here, back streaming and uh, chatting to everyone here. And I can see some familiar names. I can see Anit. Uh, oh, no. Oh, okay. <laughs> a little bit of a panic there. This is, uh, Anit was saying was, I didn't have any sound, but uh, I do have sound so that is good and uh, a big hi to Jorge and I also saw some such sweet thunder big hello to you and Lorraine and uh, how are you all doing how is life how is your chess how is everything good sir yeah. and porn march destroyer big hello to you and uh, so the format for today I thought we would chat we would solve some puzzles and uh, then, as always, I will take on your challenges. Everyone is welcome. And you can play white pieces, black pieces. It can be three minutes, five minutes, but not one minute. It can be three minutes plus two seconds. It can also even be Fisher random. I'm cool. Le uh, well, if your chest is terrible, well, it's quite late. And I'm an early morning person, so you might have a chance. Or you probably have a good chance. And uh, I also have loads in my chest at the minute i've just come back from gibraltar and my chest is going through a slump so i can kind of understand what you mean um but you just have to push through and uh it's just all about mental resilience at the minute i'm kind of i'm i'm quite a bit sad about the whole kind of like battle of the sex is not doing as well as I wanted to but you know there's been some concrete facts that came out uh I'll let you in on a secret apparently the first three hours of my chess great works well fourth hour mm -mm, bit of shaky fifth hour disaster so the battle of the sexes was amazing a fantastic tournament but the women lost and that was a bit heartbreaking. Uh, everyone was cheering us on. We had a lot of support and the tournament, it was it's in Gibraltar. There's such a good chess vibe there. And uh, you want the best way to improve. So, okay, so I'm, I'm gonna be honest here. So first of all, you've got to identify your weaknesses. So I just told you one of my weaknesses, which seems to be endurance and focus. What does that mean? 
unfortunately, it means I need to probably get fit <laughs> and start doing some long distance running. Fun times ahead. And uh, yeah, yeah, yes. Yeah, so, and uh, we are going to go through some tactics. And uh, yeah, so that's that's the one thing to do. Uh, another thing is identify your chest weaknesses. Again, if you look at my games, just as an example, um, you can see that some certain situations where the pressure is high, I'm not handling that in the best way possible. Maybe I'm exchanging off too many pieces. Maybe I'm blundering in time travel. And if I keep calm, well, the results should improve. So look at your weaknesses, look at your strengths, and uh, then focus on those things. Uh, more coffee. Unfortunately, I'm uh, allergic to, no, not allergic, intolerant to coffee. I, I also did an intolerance test uh, just before Christmas, and it came out that I was intolerant to a whole load of things. So life is different now. Yeah. And uh, yeah, everyone... I think everyone could do with actually pushing themselves physically. So I'm actually um, talking to a performance coach right now. And he said something to me, which was really interesting. He said, if you push yourself physically, you give it 100%, this will pay off dividends when you're playing chess over the board, because it means that your brain and your body is used to pushing itself to the maximum. So uh, I could wish I could play in play with the Lords of Her Grace in session for pauses. Okay. <laughs> okay, Kata, we will also be looking at puzzles. And also a big hey to Dad76 and to Sledgehammer. Uh, nice to see you all. So we are going to be looking at, uh, just as a warm up, at some. Uh, Mayer's mate uh, puzzles and uh, Mayer's mate is basically I'm gonna just gonna highlight it there when a rook comes to the h8 square and it's supported by a bishop and the king just can't get out so the reason I'm showing this is because during the battle of the sexes I was actually actually victim to this particular mate so you know you gotta install those familiar chess patterns and so here I thought we would have a, a look and try and solve. So remember, Mayer's mate, named after Karl Mayer. Incidentally, the only thing that I could find out about him on Wikipedia when I did the research for this check, particular checkmate is that he lost nearly everything. He lost all these matches and maybe they kind of felt a bit sorry for him and they were like, here you go. You can have a checkmate, checkmate named after yourself. So, okay. Uh, one Salra is saying white line, rook to g8, rook h7, rook h3, rook h8. So, okay, well, we're going to have to go around from the beginning because I was talking and I got a bit distracted from my, my own voice. So, yeah, no, it has nothing to do with the month of May, Jesse. <laughs> and Sledgehammer is suggesting these lines. I can see everyone is eager to give a check. Rook to g7 check and king h8. And then what do I see? Oh, okay. So we have some sacrifices in the air. So you all know now that if a rook gets to the h8 square, it will be checkmate. So, yep, you absolutely need to clear the h line and you have to do that via demolition sacrifice. Uh, yeah, Matt Bear, Matt Bass. Yeah, it was it was a blast. It was an absolute blast. The tournament. I, I it's Gibraltar. Gibraltar is like my spiritual home, chess town, and it's also a kind of like a nice mixture between Spanish and English. And uh, for those that know me, they know that I also speak a little bit of Spanish, but it's very much uh, mixed in with some heavy English accents. So yeah, and. Uh, now we have, uh, you need to get this H line open. And you remember when you're, when you're hunting for checkmate, and um, providing that you've kind of precisely calculated, you can sacrifice material because no cost is too great once you checkmate the king. And chess in the morning, sangria in the evening. That is right. That is, and you get winter sun. So now, yeah, and uh, I can see a few of you are shouting at me the answer. Okay. <laughs> and you're absolutely correct. 
you have to blast open the H line. And uh, now the rook comes to H4. And here you go. You get the dream square rook to H8. So these are warm-up puzzles. So we do a few of these. And uh, here we have another one. And uh, let's read out the text. Black's knight, knight's retreat is ill-advised for many, many reasons. Can you find the most punishing response? And incidentally, there's uh, with this knight on g5 and this bishop on d3 and bishop b2, these two, by the way, they're called raking bishops. There's a, a very unusual checkmate in the air, and that's like the Blackburn's checkmate, which would be if you got rid of this pawn, you would just play bishop takes knight. And that would be the black man's checkmate. Uh, okay, hang on, hang on. Okay, I, I can raging bishops. Yeah, uh, Le Bouc say, I kind of like that one rather than the raking bishops. So you actually made this checkmate over the board. It is so unusual. So the first move that you can play is queen takes pawn. You can do that in full confidence that there will the queen cannot be captured. However, you did need to work out what's happening after bishop takes. I was in an Italian game. Wow. And uh, Tommy LeBlanc, thanks for the lecture. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure whether that, that was nice or, or, or meant sarcastically, but it doesn't matter. I'm going to take it as positive. You're welcome. Anytime. Uh, Bishop g6, that's candidate moves. Um, what else do we have? Do you remember? We have a rook on h1, a pawn on h4, and if this rook managed to magically make its way to h8, this would be the mayor's mate. And once we have the pattern in our brains, we can suddenly see the solutions. Uh, why can't the queen be taken? Uh, let me just go back. The queen can't be taken because after pawn takes queen, we have bishop takes knight on h7 and uh, the king is absolutely dominated and it just can't es escape. So uh, that's why. So here we have some options and uh, lots of people suggesting some great moves. Bishop takes pawn, that looks good certainly looks very very killing another kind of move you have is yeah i neuron yeah i am also in eager anticipation for the meltwater champions chess tour it starts 19th of february and it's a new format and i can't wait to see how players get on there and uh, bishop takes pawn i love it but can you be a little bit more forcing so remember, you, if the rook were to magically find its way on h8, this would be the mayo's mate or mayot's mate. I don't quite know how to pronounce it. I'm sorry. And uh, pawn takes bishop. Yeah, if we go pawn takes bishop, then we have pawn takes queen. And uh, the rook doesn't quite get full access to the h8 square. Um, the queen has a take, but you have to be specific. Where are you going to suggest taking Katakoyusenos? So you have to tell me where. You have to give me coordinates. Queen takes bishop. We can go queen takes bishop. And uh, we can go as living unintentionally fast says queen takes knight. Okay. Matt Bias is uh, you're making a U-turn. So, and uh, a big hello to Sidesh as well and all the people who had just joined us. Everyone shouting Queen Tezesh, actually. Okay, I'm just not being fast enough with reading the chat. So yeah, I'm following the chat on YouTube and on Twitch. So feel free to comment on both sites. And uh, now the H line is open, on takes, and here we go, we got the dream and uh, one checkmate in the bag. What about this one? And uh, now we have another one. So we can see we have now this time an A line that is potentially very dangerous. And uh, we have some weak dark squares around the king, which is great news 
for this dark squared bishop on b4, which can nicely find itself on c3. And the best news is that uh, the square on b2 is controlled, so there will be no interceptor for white. Um, a2 has been a suggestion. That looks certainly good because we tend to follow the rules of uh, checks, captures, and attacks. And uh, yeah, that's definitely the, the most obvious move and uh, certainly the one we consider at first because if the king were to take, well, mission accomplished. The rook will swing over to the a8 square and then the bishop can find itself on c3. Do we like it? And pawn check. Everyone's saying pawn check. Okay, great. Yes, great move. And yep. And now what do we do? Another check. I think another check. What do you think? I think I can see everyone saying give another check. And okay, well, white decided to give a bishop. We have that one. And now the white king is in a complete cage. There's just no way out thanks to the pawn on c2. Thank you, mate. And then the rook comes to a1, and that is checkmate. And now we've got another puzzle. And uh, here we can see, same issue again for black. It's a problem on those dark squares. And uh, luckily for white, white has that bishop on e5. And uh, what to do next? Rook h3. Rook h3 looks good. But is there a chance that the king can get out? Remember, remember this lesson that I learned in uh, in Riga, which is sometimes it's not about checking the king or, or driving the king away. It's more about trapping the king, keeping the king enclosed. Because the most obvious move is rook h3. But can this king on g8 escape? Aha. And uh, I can see Anit is giving me an answer. He's saying, yes, put the bishop on f6 and stop the king from doing a forest gump. Should we try it? Bishop f6. Yes, correct. And now here, the king is trapped. So well done, Anit. And well done, everyone who got the answer right. And now we can go with the plan of going rook to h3. And no one is going to stop that rook coming to h8. And then the final puzzle in this series of Mayer's Mate is this one. And uh, okay, once again, we work out the checks, the captures, and the attacks. And this is super important here because white is one move away from giving quite a nasty discovered check. So he's going to move the knight back to d2, per se, or the knight to e5, or the knight to d6. So you can't just waste some time and just move your rook to somewhere, because there's going to be consequences. I'm, <laughs> and <laughs> I don't know my rook. <laughs> Incidentally, I met Eric Rosen for the first time in Gibraltar. He's like the nicest person ever. Uh, I mean, everyone was fantastic in Gibraltar, but Eric, is especially nice. We, I really enjoyed playing against him and hanging out with him. Um, just cut, Yes, it, it is difficult to keep up with the clock and uh, also to keep a cool head when you're feeling those time, those seconds ticking down. Um, just tell me all about it. That's a, a problem I have at the minute, but it will get resolved because I'll just keep working on it and uh, it has to get better, right? Uh, okay, so we have Anit suggesting a check, the knight coming to h2. Yep. And if the king runs into the corner, what's going to happen there? Well, we back that up with rook e1 check. And uh, that's one possible possibility. But we also have to bear in mind that the king can run to f2. So how do we keep going? So after knight h2, don't just think about king to g1. White has two options. Uh, king can go to f2. So what happens if the king goes to f2? Do you have an answer? Well, we can follow the checks. We can go rook e2, as Anit points out. And after king to g1, what happens next? So the rook is on e2. 
and the king is on g1. How does one continue? Uh, knight a, hang on, let me just read. I've <laughs> so, multitasking. Let me read the chat. Knight h2, king f2, rook e2, check, king g1, rook g2, king h1, rook f2, king g1, rook f1. Aha, 30 sat. You are a genius. Um, Fungus Man 11 asks, why are Wesley and Hikaru not going to be in the MCC Teach Tour? Um, I don't know, but they, they, uh, they took that decision. I think Hikaru will be playing a few, but uh, I'm not sure. Knight goes to H2, but also you have to remember that Hikaru is also now playing in the Grand Prix. So he probably wants to focus on that and qualifying for the candidates. So, and now I really liked what <clears> Thaddy <throat> Sat said. And uh, he said, just continue the checks. And then the whole point is to keep the king caged. Beautiful stuff. And this is the key thing. You get to the dream H1 square. And will David play? Maybe. Ask Lorraine for the Mount Water Champions chess. Or maybe he might do. Um, it would be cool if he did. I would love that. We would be cheering him on, him on like crazy. And I'm not sure we could be impartial there. <clears throat> Will there be female representation at each leg of the melt water this year? Yeah, I, I, I you can't. I know that Alexandra Krasenik is playing in the first leg, which is great. It's fantastic. And I hope to see. I mean, it's certainly one of the policies that there will be female representation everywhere so we like that and Hikaru definitely would be playing a few okay <clears throat> I agree with you Goryashkina would be an awesome contender um I'm really actually really really excited to see how Kostanik will do um we've had Duan June we've had How You Fan we've also had um Humpy Kanaru playing and uh, they've done they've done good uh Vagatron. Yeah, it was it was I was very lucky when I played against Joe because you know sometimes players have great days where they fight every single bit of the way. And uh, Joe just had a bad day and that was it. So I was quite lucky and and I had some nice moves there. So I consider myself quite fortunate that um sometimes you you do some good luck. So let me just go back. I'm going to exit this and I am going, I'm going to continue the theme. We're going to go up a level because, and we're going to go all the way up to advanced. And I saw some, you know, I'm kind of quite attracted to the aesthetic nature in chess. And I thought we could do the windmill. And uh, yeah, I uh, there is, there is a, one of the things about chess is there is luck in chess because sometimes you can play a great game and your opponent also plays fantastically too. And uh, then what happens is that maybe you guys draw. I mean, that's just a fair result. And sometimes you play maybe not so well, but your opponent plays worse or you're, you play something a little bit tricky and then your opponent collapses. And those kind, those are kind of like the symptoms of luck that's the kind of what i consider luck it's not really about like you know whether your opponent fell into a, a trap or anything it's just more about you know your opponent not handling things well maybe the clock time and uh yeah going up a level from anish to ginger gm yeah <laughs> no we weren't doing anish we were actually doing i, I was doing ch checkmates it was may's made as my checkmating course so here we go <clears throat> because I feel that these examples are quite funny and you've got to uh, appreciate the humorous side in chess. Uh, okay, so to reading the chat with knights on the back, watch, but the win was for children. Uh, I don't know what the knights of the back watch navy are, but uh, okay, we have some suggestions. And uh, bishop check, bishop takes pawn check. That is one suggestion. And then what happens next? 
Let's see if you guys can work it out to the very end. And definitely bishop takes pawn check is the most attractive move. It appeals immediately. But can you spot the sequence? Three. <laughs> okay. Well, so we have Anit, who, who's very, very good, very strong player, and uh, and uh, Magic Harkness asks, is it true that I defeated Eric? No, I didn't. I had uh, a bit of a meltdown at the end. You know, it was my fifth hour, and I had a uh, winning end game, and I had a little rule in my head that every time this king approached my pawn, I was going to check. And then when the king finally did approach the pawn, I forgot to check. And uh, he found this great resource to draw it. And I was like, oh, oh dear. Uh, no, Jillian, Jillian also actually incidentally suffered from the same issue as me, actually. He played very well up until a point. And then, and then he just kind of collapsed. And he was also playing very sharp positions, which required a lot of energy. And uh, yeah. And then the other grandmasters actually helped him. And they said, look, Okay, we'll, we'll help you. And they kind of encouraged him to play and they showed him some solid lines. I mean, that's such a great team spirit from the guys, you know, to help someone who is struggling. And uh, yeah, he started playing a lot more solidly and started scoring some points. Exactly. As Anit points out, he drew Marie. Okay, so I have some people. Yeah, I agree with you, Matt. That's exactly what Eric does. So everyone is shouting at me to take the pawn and then this is where it gets seriously cool this is why i have to show you these type of things first of all you just check and then you check again and then because you know you haven't had enough of the checks you check again and now the king has got no safe squares whatsoever so now it's all about trapping that king and getting a queen to a2 yeah you can go to b3 and if you have to give all the way the queen that's as good as resignation there is no oh no my queen uh this is really just bad news and uh that's game over and here we go here's another one so you can see that this move is tactically a little bit shaky why is it shaky because you have a rook on b8 staring down at the white king and this bishop is controlling quite a few of the king's dark squares. And, well, the first move that does appeal is... Ah, okay. No, no need to apologize. Uh, puzzles are one of the sports and the backwatch maybe is okay. Aha. Uh -huh. Very interesting. I love hanging out with uh, everyone here in chat because you guys tell me such interesting stories about yourselves. And, uh, you know, from, and you guys help me out so much when it comes to internet speak because I don't know anything. So the first, the first issue you have to say is it's very attractive to go night takes pawn, undoubtedly. But you have to work out whether this white king can escape. Because if this white king is going, woo -hoo -hoo, I'm running for the hills, then the king is safe and you might have just blundered your queen. So the first thing you have to say is if you're going to go knight takes pawn, how are you going to stop the king from running to c1? If you can do that, then the white king is forced to go to a2. And that's the only square. So it's like one checking square away from mate. Because remember, with this pawn gone from the board, let's put it out of the screen. You can see the king on a2 is vulnerable to checkmate. When in doubt, <laughs> sack your queen. Yeah. Uh, Lapsa, I still have no idea how to play the Karakhan. Oh, blasphemy. No, no, no. I just joke with you. Uh, it's, it's, it's quite a tricky opening, actually, and there's some super sharp lines, but practice makes perfect. And uh, right this morning, I, I spent all of today just practicing on my Karakhan, trying to remember the moves. I got a lot of it wrong. I only got 79% accuracy, which was should be 85 at least. Uh, okay. Wow. Bronco Zuliska. 
the great Hungarian folk hero, Ibushi, oh, who's said to have once swum over from England to France to get some salt bread fish and chips. Uh, really? <laughs> And poor much destroyer. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Have, has everyone has everyone uh, found out the way to stop the the king running to the hills? Okay. I'm not sure I understood you that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You got to with the if the knight is on b4. Well, where's the knight going to check? It's going to check from d3, and the king is caged. So, yep, you can sack the queen. And after knight takes rook, the king is not going to c1. That would be happy days. In fact, unfortunately, the king has to run to a2. And now it's one check away from being checkmate. Knight c1 is not possible because this bishop is on the board. But that doesn't matter because what do we do? Uh, knight takes before queen takes to seven. Da, 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 da. Okay, rook b2. Yep, we do. And after the king goes to a1, what happens next? What are we going to do? Lots of options. And uh, some people are saying rook to b7, but that's not correct. I don't know why I played it. I don't know. <laughs> that, that would also be a move. Just bank the material. I'd recommend that kind of move when you don't have too much time on your clock. But you've got to be try to be accurate here. Um, what are you going to play? Rick C2. Yeah, we could we could set this process of the windmill in operation. Rick check. Oh, you can't give me vague instructions. You have to tell me where. And uh, hello to giant pixels. Rick check. Uh, and also hi to Luca Pupo. Thank you for being part of the chat. Uh, Rook C2, I Neuron is saying give a check. And then what happens next? Are we going to put the windmill in operation again? Rook to B2, force the king back. Oh, and after king can't go any further. What was happening after king A1? Oh, we can do the whole lot. Oh, after king A1, you can go Rook takes F2 check. And then rook takes a2. <laughs> and, then, and then finally rook to b2. Oh, chess is a cruel game at times. Yeah. Uh, you can also go rook to b8. So I thought it's quite nice, quite aesthetically pleasing. And uh, here we go. New puzzle. And as you can see, the white king on the run, not happy. And uh, uh, yeah, Paul Marsh destroyer, totally right. Uh, <laughs> so, Anit, uh, I would like to do this to opponents I don't like. I agree with you. The problem is, is that your opponents can resign at any stage and they spoil your fun. Uh, yes, I do. And the answer to Vagatron, I, I use every resource that I have available to me. So I'm using the videos from Kasparov Chess. Um, I'm also quite inspired by the technique that Levon Aronian did to get his Grandmaster title, where he broke down his game. And I was like, right, to get to the Grandmaster title, I need to do this. And uh, I really want to do that. And I've been following the masterclasses from Kasparov Chess. I also train with spaced uh, repetition with Chessable. Uh, I watch the videos on Chess24. I use every source available to me because that's what you should do. Um, okay, so people are saying to me, Queen check. Again, you need to be specific. Um, queen check. There's a check on F1. There's a check on H1. There's even a Rook check. Uh, am I still trying to reach the GM title? Why not? Um, why not? Okay, I know my rating has taken a terrible plunge and it's a shame you know because i i've been tremendously blessed because i have a lot of supporters out there and a lot of people cheering for me when i'm playing so i really really want to have a good tournament and just make everyone happy and uh you know it's it's nice when i win and everyone's like yes you did it 
I I have all <laughs> yeah and you've got to you got to have a challenge in life and you got to have something to aim for because otherwise what is the point okay um yep so queen to f1 check queen to h1 and the king is going to hide itself on g4 so that's stage one but what happens next i mean how are you going to continue the game yeah pawn my mouth destroyer why not is my favorite answer to people asking me why i like it i you know also you you guys have to give me quotes because i'm a big fan of quotes and uh yeah so why not to people who ask me why yeah it's too much work and therefore they won't chase it anymore but you're still going for it yeah you know you just got to keep going and enjoying yourself and every single challenge that you get okay it's a challenge and it's uh, you know it's only a failure if you kind of give up and go hey it's over but um okay question me why and <laughs> <laughs> I have to say it's my niece's favorite hobby at the minute. She's four and she asks why to everything. It's relentless. Um, you miss a hundred percent of the shots you don't take. Yes, true. And I'll tell you a confession. Up until a few months ago, I had no idea who Wayne Gretzky is, but thanks to Masterclass, I now know he's a very famous ice hockey player. Uh, okay, so we have a suggestion from Sledgehammer who says queen to f1 and the king comes to g4 and h5 and then rook e5. So that's uh, option one. Okay, but let's run through this one a little bit. The king, queen goes to f1, king escapes to g4 and then the rook is attacking the queen. So after your move h5 the king can take on h5 but once the rook e5 comes remember the rook is attacking the queen you can do these desperados of queen takes pawn potentially potentially you have to work it out because there is there the king is on h5 and there is a queen to d1 check so you're probably you're good you're good is there anything better because there's queen to f1 and there's also queen to h1. Those are our choices. So when you have those kind of positions on the board, just do just calculate one and then do a comparison with the other one. So in that line, is the queen better on h1 or f1? Yeah, if you have elevated one look for better. <laughs> I saw a tweet from Simon actually where that that happened to him he his opponent took back and he had a mate in one and he ended up he ended up doing a mouse slip and he ended up losing yeah the queen is the most powerful part of the battle yeah um uh Vega Tr david is very very helpful um so now we don't work together he has worked i have worked together with him in the past he's given me some ideas here and there if i have ever any lines that i want to get checked through I, sometimes i run them past him and uh, he's also just a great friend and so when i when i was feeling low i i reached out to him and he he said to me it's it's okay you'll do some luck just keep going yeah <laughs> he he is and you know he and he's just a great guy and very very helpful does amazing things for british chess he helps quite a few of the juniors uh yeah yeah it was a really very close flip i agree with you about the battle of the sexes and uh yeah I, I i feel like if i had managed to put away some of those games you know drawn the games i should have drawn um won the games i should have won you know i had some promising positions uh, with the white pieces but yeah it happens and what can i say you learn um okay so did people answer my the question? Is the queen better on h1, f1? Yeah, they did, Paul. They did. They did. And they had great, I mean, both teams had great team spirit. And 
yeah, they managed to come back. And they were kind of, I think it was a common thing actually with the women that when we blundered, we blundered big time. Whereas the guys were re really resourceful. And I don't think that their mistakes were that devastating. H1, my lady. Yes, H1. Okay, so we have one vote for H1 and uh, another vote for F1. So, da, 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 da. so the, other, the big question is after king to g4, I love the idea of going h5, pushing the king to h to, to the fifth row, and then that kind of makes the rook e5 a lot more attractive. Uh, what would have been my profession if not for chess? That's an interesting question. Um, I'll be honest with you, I don't know. Chess has always been such a big part of my life. Um, something that I'm absolutely fascinated by is history. So I guess maybe I would have loved to have been a historian or something. <laughs> or a writer. Actually, I was told off by, by my English teacher all those years ago. She said, she told my parents, there's some people who can write and some people who can't. Yvanka, unfortunately, can't. So I was like, hmm, okay. That was, yeah. Have I ever played hockey? No. Nope. Yes, 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 yes. Uh, hockey, but not ice hockey. So, yeah, in, in the UK, we do hockey. And I was always in the wings. And then, then I kind of lost my motivation because they're then they're like, you're tall. You can go in the back, play defense. And uh, this is like a tall person's curse in the UK. You always get given the defensive roles. Like, here you go. You can be goalkeeper. Yay. No, I mean, no, I hate maths. I hate physics. I hate it with a passion. I can't do it. No, if I come up to you and I provide you with a, an answer to a maths problem, do not trust me. Chances are it, would, it was wrong. Uh, queen to h1 check. That's right, fair dessert. And uh, now we can go h5, draw the king to the fifth row. And now I like this idea of rook e5. And now we have... Well, I like the idea of bishop b2 covering the squares. And, well, we have a pick. Is a queen takes? Queen takes is good to me. And then the king is trapped. So now we go back to h1. And very nice. Okay. We also have some people. <laughs> so we have some people. I also got some support from for not liking maths and also not uh also got some uh criticism for not liking goalkeepers yeah it's just because you know they always put me in the position of goalkeeper and uh i have a it's mainly to do with the sport that we were playing because we were playing this game called netball which i don't think too many other countries in the world play it and it's kind of like solely for girls and the goalkeeper literally just stands in one area and goes, woohoo, I'm stopping you. It's not even as fun as basketball. But anyway, it should two English people around my company. What are no-go topics for small talk? Um, you can't go wrong with the weather. We love to talk about the, the weather. Um, so basically anything, just uh, you definitely have to ask them how their weekend was, how their week was going. You have to make that kind of chit chat. You have to say, great weather. If it's really bad weather, you could go, oh, bad, it's bad weather. It's been raining for days. We love this. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, yeah, just the most polite, inane questions. You can't go wrong. Yeah, I think it's uh, less less fun than handball. Handball actually is, is probably okay. Netball. Yeah, I mean, I think it's an Olympic sport, but uh, it's not very popular. Yeah. Um, okay, so I have someone else rem reminiscing about netball. Maybe ask you about their favourite royal. Yeah, um, the Queen is my favourite royal. Do you... <laughs> Do I reckon John Nunn looks somewhat similar to Brian May from Queen? No, no, you say it. No, you say it maybe uh i've never thought about it that way okay so whilst i ponder over that uh, new life question of whether john nunn looks like brian may 
I'm just going to take a look at the position and I can see that black has two, not raking, that is the incorrect terminology, raging bishops. And uh, you can see there is one that has undiscovered potential on d6, hitting an h2. And if this rook were gone from the equation, black would have queen takes pawn, checkmate. Now, oh, everyone has gone uh, crazy. Rook e2, if, if Ansel says rook e2, and Florenzo says uh, rook e2. And uh, look at it. I love the move. Because queen takes pawn is also possible, but unfortunately only leads to a draw because the king can hide on g1. But as chat is pointing out, rook e2 is a killer because after queen takes queen, it was forced. You can't capture the rook because the queen takes pawn. That's checkmate. Ends the game, as my father used to say. And then rook goes to e2. Queen takes, and now, whoops, queen takes queen. And now these two bishops spring into life and we get the old windmill, not wimp mill. And uh, now where's a check? I think you can, what, how are we going to continue? I, I don't like to lose, no one likes to lose their queen, but it's different when you sacrifice it. When you sacrifice it, it's uh, all good. How about picking up another pawn? Rook takes h2 check. After all, after all, why not? No, says chat. No, you do a rook check, but you have to be specific. You can't just go rook check because literally any rook move is a check. Rook takes bishop. Well, rook takes bishop, you have to, you have to work out what's going to happen after bishop e4. So I'm suggesting that you just capture the h pawn and go, this is a double check, my friend. And uh, and then mate. Yeah, so that's why I'm suggesting rook takes pawn check. And after king goes to g1, if you want to bank it, you just go rook takes queen. Although, hang on a second, I'm piece down. So I need to be a bit, but still. So we can take one pawn for free. So I, I think we'll take one pawn and then and then we go, what do we do? We can, we can go rook takes, how actually, let's count the pawns. One, two, three, four, five, six, four pawns for the piece. So more than good enough if we were to go rook takes queen. I see the bishop had the trap for the king. Or if you want to, you can go rook to g2 and rook to g4. Yeah, ha ha. I think you can do you can you can win more by going rook to g2 and then you go rook to g4 and then white wants you to play bishop takes bishop but you say no rook takes queen and then the bishop whoops this bishop on e4 will fall and uh windmill devastation and then final puzzle in this windmill series is uh here no, no mate, no mate. But it is a nice example of the windmill. It's uh, very, very pleasurable to deliver that. I know. This is why I thought I have to show everyone the windmill. And then I had a little bit more serious topic, but to do one puzzle on the improve called improving on missed chances. Yeah, and this is that course is by Roman Edouard. And queen h3 and then fork on f2. So, okay, first of all, we need to have a look at the territory and scout it out. So we see the knight would like to go to f2. One, two, three, let's count material. So white is two pawns up. Woohoo! Material is everything in some people's eyes, but not in ours. Uh, we are doing something much more deadly. And as someone suggested, queen takes knight is definitely a possibility because after rook takes queen, we have knight to f2 check. And, well, well, the king is forced to g1 and the king can 
only oscillate between G1 and H1. Oh, we can have a lot of fun. So I agree and we get queen h3. Oh no, the queen. And after knight f2, don't take the knight, don't take the queen, take the rook first and then go back. And how many can we get? We have to take the queen. Yeah. Yes, exactly. And in the words of everyone in chat, boom. <laughs> yeah and we actually have some time for let's get exit this and i'm just going to pick on roman edward i'm going to go again we're going to go up to advanced because it's nice and it was improving on missed chances mm -hmm. you know my gibraltar was all about missed chances so let's have a look at this one so in the game I'll tell you the story. White played queen to f2 and promptly lost the queen after rook to e3 check. So that's not a good move. But is there any other possibility for white to save the game? And uh, thank you, Pawn Marsh Destroyer, for the compliment. I was going to drink some. I, I inspired by my inspired by the fact that I need to improve my endurance levels so that, you know, I can last for more than four hours when I'm playing jazz. I went for a run uh, up a hill and I didn't stop. So it's good, good stuff. So knight d7, Ivan's still saying knight to d7. So the idea is after knight to d7 is actually to play in Oslo, no, 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 in Bergen. Uh, Bergen is full of these mountains. It's a beautiful place when it's not raining. And when does it stop raining? See, this is why I'm so British. It's like it never stops raining. And we get like two weeks of summer. But aside from that, when the sun is out, it's like paradise. I'm very lucky to be living here. Um, so night to, to any of you live in mountain places with snow, with the most amazing landscape, but not the finest of weathers. Oh, I'm, I'm the only Brit. Uh, so knight d7 is uh, suggested by Evansel, which is a very sneaky idea. The whole idea is that after, 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 let me just lose, get control of my mouse. So the whole idea is after knight to d7, after rook takes queen, we have, Knight f6 check, king h8, and then we have rook f8. And that will be checkmate and a kind of like, uh, like back rank mate kind of thing. So this is deadly. And uh, unfortunately, this rook and this queen are just not well coordinated. I mean, what are they doing? Knight d7, excellent move. And what is also excellent about this move is that if you try to run away with the king to g8, it's not happening because rook f8 kills the escape from there. And so this is why, sorry, this is why knight to e4 would be inaccurate, but knight to d7 is correct, because you have to anticipate the black king running away. And uh, knight d7, h5, is the king safe? Well, it can hide on h6, but unfortunately g5 is going to be deadly there. So you continue as normal with knight to F what's that? Knight to F6 and now G5. Checkmate. Uh did we have a Gibraltar chess party? Yes, we did. We did have a chess party. <laughs> uh, at the end. Uh we had it was a lovely, lovely, lovely tournament to play, and I was very, very lucky to be invited. Uh, it's not every day I get uh the chance to play in such a unique tournament and also have a, a nice party at the end of it just like my good friend Boris Johnson um what if g5 oh sorry I've lost what if g5 and then h5 okay I am um, well we'll deal with this one first and maybe we'll go back if we have time um okay so first of all, you scout the territory. Um, take a look at this position. It looks terrible for white. I mean, 
hello what are all these pieces doing in the back row it's not where they should be but 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 the first thing we do notice is that this octo knight in the center does have the potential for a fork on d7 uh, <laughs> Only if you're grumbling about him, the book say. If you're grumbling about him, if, um, but oh, oh, it's, it's, yeah, maybe stay stay away from politics. Um, so, so this is um, the first thing you need to see. Is knight d7 is a possibility, especially if the king were on f8 and this bishop were removed. Is it possible? Lo and behold, it is, as Ivansel points out. Then the rook takes here, and uh, you do have to work this one out, but it's a very simple case of grabbing what's on offer, and that's it. And, uh, okay, this king might be a little bit vulnerable, but it's kind of, if we compare it with the position that we started off like this, well, white has some chances to save the game, even though the king is pretty unsafe. Here, white's got no chance because if the white queen moves, then this knight falls. This king, it's a disaster, disaster. Uh, what am I currently reading? I am currently reading a book. Despite me saying I don't like maths, I am reading a book about statistics. Now, who would have thought that I would be reading a book on statistics? This is about um, how you can, what questions you should ask yourself um, when you when you see statistics. Like, do they provoke an emotional reaction? Sometimes it's good to take a step back and see what the numbers are trying to say, because you can con a lot of people using statistics. So, yeah, yeah. So, so, yeah. It's about numbers. So when they report to you, like for instance, um, so and so people have died or something, you know, your first time you kind of like look at it and you're like, so numbers, all these people have died. It's just a statistic. You kind of lose the human story. But also, it might be because of the way it was reported, some things might have gone missing. Like they do tell a story about how some COVID deaths actually went unreported because. No, it was reported, but it wasn't marked because um, the people who were registering the deaths were not using an account. They were not using the proper software. They were using Excel, which is like a basic software. Yeah. So, yeah, but I mean, it's it's by Tim Harford. So I, I do recommend him. He does some podcasts as well. And he was the one who wrote Undercover Economist. So and it's very, it's very easy to read. Uh, I like it. So... Something like that, Southern Chris. Something like that, and they talk about Daryl Harmon. He, he he talks about this book a lot, and how he, at first he thought this book by on statistics by Daryl Harmon was quite harmless fun, and uh, and then he discovered some things about Daryl. About uh, they talk Daryl Harmon came up with some t statistic that uh, stalks. Uh, the higher the, the higher number of storks, the higher number of children. So are the two correlated? And the answer is no, of course not. Um, okay. Anyway, anyway, I'm rambling here. So yeah, the first thing you need to notice is that this rook on f2 is what I kind of call a tactical weakness. It's being attacked once, it's being defended once. And the move you want to play is like rook takes, rook takes pawn. But unfortunately, rook takes pawn fails to rook takes c2. And then you also look at this beautiful pattern, which is a rook attacking two loose pieces. And as our Brian May lookalike, not really, uh, John Nunn says loose pieces drop off. So yes, they do. But white has a tactical resource, which is this back rank. So... Once we sum up all those factors, as chat points out, bishop b4 is a great move because now you can play rook takes e3. And the key as to why it has to be bishop b4 is because the bishop controls the square on f8 and therefore 
you can see suddenly the skies as I say the clouds have aligned and uh, rook f8 is not possible this rook on f2 is under attack and rook e8 saves the day what if rook f4 well we can go rook f well okay we can go rook f4 but because you control the f8 square you can go rook to e8 and if the rook retreats simply just capture it bishop takes rook rook takes bishop takes rook would be my first move and uh, you're still threatening to potentially do a rook uh, check mate and this rook on f2 is still a problem um, you need to get back to the eighth rank and i think the best bet here is probably just to kind of go h5 or you know create some lift for the king and also bank on the fact that this bishop on b4 is loose so yeah you say okay fine you can take my rook on f2 but i'm getting your rook on your bishop on b4 and we have chances can retreat but bishop i see the h5 yeah it's completely winning for white um i'm not sure it's completely winning for white after a move like h5 i mean i think black has some chances to save it or maybe maybe not even h5 maybe you have to go h6 and preserve the integrity of the pawn structure um as long as you don't fall for this back rank mate and as long as you're able to trade this bishop for this rook black has some chances after all as they say rook endings are notorious for being drawn oh, yeah yeah so no 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 yeah i'm not sure i'm actually not sure whether black can even hold it because you know it's a c pawn it's a past c pawn and the rook on e3 is very very active and uh, this is kind of the factors that determine whether a rook ending is won judge your uh, judge how your how your pawns can advance whether it can be assisted by teamwork the white king and the white rook they're very well placed and the black king is far away uh, the one saving grace for this for black in the rook ending is that this rook on c4 is pretty active and therefore can be a bit of a nuisance but whether it's a draw or not, I'm not sure. Um, I don't know, Paul, much the story how many times John Nunn has won the World Championship in chess studies. Um, yeah, really don't know the answer to that question. Maybe someone can help out in chat. So, and then finally, we'll do the last puzzle because we're doing so well. And then I will take on your challenges. Uh, okay. So, okay, white to play here. Can we find the best move? Yeah, let's have a go. So the first thing to notice here is that uh, there are some pieces that have the potential to, well, attack the king along the H line. And uh, you have a knight willing to spring to F6. You also have a bishop coming to F6 and a rook that is also willing to go into the game with h4. So those are kind of things that I'm looking at. If the rook gets to h4, looks deadly, looks deadly. So, well, rook goes to h4, knight f6 will open up another line against the king, and uh, the king is not going to feel very comfortable staring down the barrel of this gun on g3 and uh i also have to ask ourselves is the white king safe i mean does black have any good checks like the queen coming to a1 b1 c1 unfortunately is not going to happen because this bishop well c1 could happen i i stand corrected c1 could very well happen because of this pin so as long as white has an answer to this check this check this check then white can initiate operation so why so says they like knight to f6 oh knight takes h8 oh i i i oh hang on a second i missed oh i missed some some kind of okay 
Ooh, some people are suggesting some very spicy lines. So knight to f6 check. And after pawn takes knight, ooh, queen to h8. Very nice. But there is the candidate move knight takes h8, knight takes queen. And then the knight comes back to g6. Um, I, th I think that's a good defense to that idea. Um, but what about knight to f6 and then swing the rook over to h4? After all, the queen would love to give check mate on h7. Knight f6 for sure is the right move. And now, what do we think? Well, we can't go bishop takes pawn. We have rook h4. We have the very fruity queen to h8. Um, does that work? Knight takes queen, bishop f6, knight to g6. What do you guys think? Rook h4 looks nice. Queen to h8. We have to calculate here. Queen to h8 is because if this works, we're in for the brilliancy prize. Queen to h8, king takes h8, bishop takes f6, the king can hide on h7. Because this knight is a great defender on g6 and it's covering the h4 square. So in that case, rook h4. And uh, now, what can we do? We can go queen h7, but remember, the king is going to run and hide behind these pawns. So maybe now we can think about... Do we have an answer to queen h7 looks good? If we have an answer. If we don't have an answer, then we could trap the king. Can we trap the king? Queen to h8. Queen to h8. Yep. I like queen to h8. And then bishop f6. Trap the king. King is not running away. And now rook to h8. And we started with Maya's mate. And we finished with Maya's mate. And I lost the game to Maya's mate. So that's how the universe works. Very nice. It is very, very nice. I, I love it. This is so beautiful when you see the ideas. So, right, it's time for everyone to start challenging me. So remember, if you want to challenge me, oh, here you go, already, you have to challenge the little hat, that's my handle. Uh, can be three minutes, can be five minutes, can be three minutes plus two seconds, can be even Fisher at Random Chess. Um, I will take on and I will accept all your challenges. I will not accept one minute because that's too short. I will not accept 10 minutes because that's too long. And uh, I'm going to say goodbye to Anit. And uh, thank you so much for joining us. And yeah. <laughs> and Lorraine also says a very, very important rule. Don't do any bond clouds don't like it you're not going to win any brownie points there and yeah thank you thank you anita once again for joining us and for solving the puzzles um what am i going to play okay i'm going to put my knight here and i also we're going to play queen's indian and no bomb cloud yes this is num my number one rule in life okay in this pawn structure just as a general kind of rule of thumb Whenever black has fianchetted this bishop and then combine that with d5, I take it. I take it because then I'm going to use this open line to just to attack this c7. It's as simple as that. And uh, now I'm going to put my queen on c2. So I've got my eye on the prize. And black has to be moderately careful because there are knight g5 ideas. So for instance, so here, black wants to open things up, so I'm going to attack, and I'm going to try and claim that, actually, I'm ready in the center, and he isn't. So how, how, how do I do this? Okay, let's attack. That wasn't attacking, that was taking. Let's attack. Yeah. 
you don't need to ask me twice. I love to push pawns. Can only members challenge? Uh, you have to be a member of Casper of Chess, but you don't have to be a premium member. So it can be anyone. And now I'm going to ask the question to this queen. Because this is this is the big issue for him. Where is he going to hide the queen? Um, it's an, an issue I often have in the queen's gambit. Like, where am I going to put it? Where? And if you hide on e8, great. This doesn't look so attractive. If you try to hide it on b8, again, not so attractive. If you try to hide it elsewhere, you know, you're going to be, you try to swap off. No, 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 no. It's my only advantage is the fact that my, unless there's something, I need to calculate. Okay, no, hang on. I need to calculate. And I let that one go by accident, but that's okay. Um, let's put pressure. I have to speed up because I don't think I get any added time. So I'm going to, no, no, you won't get any Berlin draws with me. It's not happening. So I'm, I'm going to put everything on this line. And again, this queen is going to hamper these two rooks. You want to connect the rooks. Okay, I have to be super careful. Also time, be quick. You'll be, be quick. You've got to jump over the candlestick. Um, okay, and now I'm going to... Do, do, do. Can I improve my bishop? And then I'm going to maximize my pieces. Take space. And 40 seconds left for my opponent. Pawn March Destroyer. Okay, I'm going to cover that, but I should I should think about my king. Yeah, I'm going to cover some squares. I was thinking a little bit that Bishop C8 was possible. Um, da, da, da. I quite like. I want to activate my rooks, and also I want to put a rook on the seventh row. 12 seconds, d1, d4, um, okay, I have take, I didn't see that move, it takes, mm. okay, it is what it is. Okay, I have a great extra pawn, and now the question is, he lost on time and i also have one other rule which is like if if i've played you once then uh, don't challenge me let's everyone else have a go when i log on to, it says you're busy well, you, i'm free now so chess demystified you can try and challenge me again and uh i will get the challenges Thank you. Thank you so much, Paul Much. I'm very bad at saying thank you. I don't know why. But thank you so much for the game. Uh, I don't know how it got so slow towards the end. It's a fast time control. Three minutes. No one else is challenging me. I thought some... Am I, am I unavailable? Or is there just no one who wants to play? Oh. Um, okay. I'm not getting any challenges. <laughs> no one is uh no one wants to play. Oh, refresh. Okay. I I will refresh. Okay. Now, okay, so it might have been a technical error on my behalf. Uh, I'm waiting for people to come. Challenge. Yeah. Uh, okay, suddenly I got some. Okay. Okay, people have been challenging me, but for some reason it has been timed out. Um, 
Yeah, Ale Trough, I agree with you. I can't wait. I can't wait to see how everyone does. And uh, look at that. Fancy, fancy color. I like the blue. Ooh, I'm playing with the black pieces. So I also can't wait for the Champions Chess, chess Tour. Uh, I just love it when the, the players... Hmm. I'd prepared something against bishop f4. And now I can't do it because the knight's on f. Okay, so c5. Yeah, the knight's on f6. I had prepared some lines where things were happening. But this knight wasn't on f6. And a big hi to Omid Hendricks. Yeah. Thank you for joining in the chat. Okay, I'm taking center. I don't need to be asked twice. I love, I love the center. And I guess you're going to try to destabilize the center and I'm going to try to maintain it. So it's a big battle. Um, okay, oh, we'll develop. King to safety. It's always a good idea. And now you've got to be careful where you put your knight. You can't put your knight to f3 because e4 is happening. Uh, blue is also my preference. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, normally, normally I think it would be in the settings where you kind of set your game preference. So, yeah, I'm not quite sure. So I'm going to provoke, I'm going to provoke the knight to come to f3. It's a good idea, really. Um. What do I, line do I find the most challenging against the Karakhan? It depends on your style, I'll be honest with you. So if, you, if you're a space grabber, then the advanced variation is your friend. But there's a lot of nuances there and there's a lot of move orders and you can be positionally busted if you don't know what you're doing. Um, so that can be dangerous in the right hands. But if you're going to play the advanced variation against the Karakhan, just know where your pieces should be going and knowing how you should attack. Um, that's dangerous. Um, if you like open positions, the panel off is, again is also very dangerous in the right hands, especially with this isolated queen's pawn. Um, it's it's uh, you just don't trade off pieces. That's the only thing I would say there. And if you just want that niggle, then the the two knights is quite quite nice and also the exchange variation so you know the exchange variation i i would say is probably the one if you're really just looking for that small plus equals and i i can find that one quite irritating to play against because the position is just equal um so yeah so it depends that really wasn't kind of like wasn't a clear cut answer, but very much look at your style and choose according to that. Um, da, 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 da. Your king is not safe. And I'm feeling a bit restless, so I'm going to just blast open the king. Those are the principles that I was taught. And, uh, ah, time out. Okay. Well, thank you, Loren. Um, that was a bit unfortunate with the time. But yeah, you can all challenge me. Challenge the little hat. Uh, I'm there playing on Kasparov Chess. You don't need to be a premium member. Anyone can challenge me as long as you have an account. And I can see Bill63 wants to play. Have we played before? No, we haven't. And we got red and blue screen. I love the colors behind it. Um, okay, so what am I going to play? I'm going to play B3. I'm gonna wing this one. I'm gonna put it here. No, I have not given. I'm gonna put double fianchetto. Castles. Um, mm -hmm. I'm assuming I'm, I should be doing something like this. I, I want to take the center some point that probably is incorrect oh we're playing five minutes i think it's a little bit longer oh too late yeah just 
just uh, I promise you, I will try to play absolutely everyone who challenges me. So I ask, so if you play, you play, if you've already played against me, then do let someone else challenge me, so that everyone gets a shot. Okay, and then I'm going to destabilize the center because it's I just can't let it live. I'm gonna put that there. Mm. Mm. It's not strategically the best move, but okay. It is what it is. We're still putting pressure on the big center. I'll do better. No, you're fine, Lauren. It was just a case of uh, the clock. I mean, your position was maybe slightly worse, but still lots and lots of play. Uh, we'll maybe try with a, uh, a longer time control next time. Okay, now I'm going to come into C5. And I'm going to put dynamic pressure on this one. Okay. I'm not going to let you ruin my pawn structure. Oh, why did I do that? I could have taken the bishop pair. Oh, well. Oh, well. Don't play so quickly next time. This is also something good advice. Don't play quickly. Um, we'll put pressure again. I will put as much pressure as I can on this point. Um, is Twitch an um, North American service? I don't know. I, I really don't know. I'm not really good with technology. Uh, it might be. It might be just a, uh, an American service. I mean, it might be an American company, but I know everyone is using Twitch. Um, so has not the best is sometimes it could be just lag and everything so okay i'm gonna attack that and i really want to ruin your pawn structure okay dark squares you're gonna weaken your king Give a check. And now going to grab material because if everybody who knows me knows that I love to grab material. It's like my favorite thing on the planet. So <gasps> no. It's gonna take with the bishop. Why did I play? <sighs> oh dear. Oh dear me. Uh, <clears throat> I thought he was gonna take with the bishop. Why did I just drop my queen there without seeing what had happened? See, this is why you don't play fast moves. Now, how do I? Yeah. This is a, yeah, a disaster. It is a disaster because I thought I just dropped. Why would I do that? Oops. Why would I just pick up my queen and just put it there as a pre-move? Why would I do that? Okay. Now I am going to resign this game. First. I'm going to play on. Why? I don't know why. Because I can't bring myself to lose. But I'm going to get ready. I'm going to do it soon. And he's going to win this one. Okay, fine. Oh, I have I have this chain of pawns. I, I live in hope for that. Okay, I attack that one. I'm basically just, okay, we go here, and then I'm getting ready, I have my, um, I 
I don't know. Okay, this is not good viewing and Rook B2 is coming and I can't do anything about that. So I'm going to resign. I'm going to resign this one and lesson learned. I will not be picking up my queen and just dropping it without seeing what my opponent has played. Uh, but okay, you can can you all find me on, on Cusp of Chess? That was uh, not good. So I'm going to exit and I'm going to wait for people to challenge me. So I'm there waiting and Sledgehammer wants to play and I'm going to accept. And uh, five minutes. Okay, so if that was meant to be E4, it is E3. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it was not, it was not intentional. Okay, okay so H4. Get h5 in the style of alpha zero. And I'm going to solidify this. Just claiming that it's not easy for him to develop ish. I'm going to sit on this pawn on d5 and then I'm going to try to exchange off pieces and then castle queenside. And so it's a full fledged game. I like this kind of position. Yeah, thank you, Bill, for the game. <laughs> no, 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 no. I should, uh, I should have just resigned. I don't know. It's like, a, it's like my stubborn nature comes out when I blunder. I'm like, oh. Don't want to resign. No, I don't think any chess player really wants to resign. But um, okay, so now operation exchange of pieces. Okay, I like to put my knight onto d4. My bishops are not great. They could they could be better. They could get a higher mark on the report card. Um, okay, pawn takes pawn. It's nice. I've always been very mean about the Dutch defense, but when I find myself playing against it, you know, I've said so many negative things about the opening that I feel there is, there is a challenge that I have to kind of like back what I say with actual action. Okay. I also want fun on the queen side. Um, is it true that a woman I am plays like a national master and a woman FM? Um, I don't know. I mean, women's international master is round about 2150, 2200. So I think it's it's stronger than an NM. Is an NM? I mean, NM is quite popular in the US, but it's not really something that we use so much in Europe. Um, yeah. But um, yeah, I also I just saw that Allo Trough is uh, complementing the interface. I know it's so pretty. It's like such a beautiful interface. I love the colors and I just, you know, you can tell that it's okay. Okay. I got excited there. I have to be super careful, but I think I can, pretty sure I can take that one because this discovered check. Okay. Now I have to scaramouche. I like my queen. Uh, what is an NM? NM is a national master. But I'm not quite sure what standard it is. I mean, is it is it 20? Oh, okay. I mean, can anyone tell me what what actual level is a uh, style is um, a national master? Did I? Okay, let's get back. Yeah, he'd love me en passant. So <laughs> I was just, wasn't sure. 
uh oh okay it's 2200 yeah so a women's international master is definitely the same level as a, an nm okay i'll have a past born and candidate master what is what level is that i i've heard the name but i've i just don't know Tag that. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I should have maybe fought a little bit harder for this past born, but I didn't. I just have to apologize to that pawn there on h7. Da, 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 calculation, I'm good to go. Okay, you threatening anything? No, don't see it. So I'm going to threaten checkmate. Queen takes pawners in the air. 2000 is uh, a candidate master, Aka. Okay, okay, Aka. Okay. New word there. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What to do? Check. I'm going to meet that with Rook C1. And now I'm stacking the rook and i'm threatening queen takes pawn checkmate so it's too many threats and now let's take that one off the board and then the next move is going to be bishop c7 and yeah exit Oh, okay, you can even do little emojis where you can applaud your opponent. I should do that. Um, I should applaud people who beat me or play a game. So, yeah, thank you so much, Sledgehammer, for the board. And now I'm playing a play Fusha. And Fusha is from Australia. So cool. From down under us, what time is it in Australia? Um, must be early in the morning, or maybe not so early in the morning. Okay, so what am I going to play? I'm going to play mainstream stuff. And then I'm going to play here. Okay, it's Vienna. I'm going to give a pawn. Okay. Protect the center. Okay. I have to do it. I have to do the Greek gift. Oh no, there's no there's no hiding now. That is the Greek gift. Um, so some kind of important points there, actually. So first of all, you, sh you should be capturing the pawn. Don't let white have a center. And then here, when you sounded the retreat, you should just come forward. The one kind of point that I really want to make about this pawn stretch, when white has a pawn on e5, it cuts the board in half. And uh, one of the signs of that is that you have to, well, you not you have to, but you mostly attack on the king side. And this perfect attacking square for a light squared bishop. And uh, yeah, you're vulnerable to all sorts of things, the Greek gift being one of them. And if you if you try to block that, maybe with by pushing a pawn forward or maybe moving a rook, so the knight on f8 covers this h7 square, you're still very vulnerable to um, king side pawn rollers. And you have to break up the center which is not an easy job to do and this queen 
can't get to her king very easily. So, yeah, thank you for the game. Um, can't remember who I played, but thank you, Vera Fusha from Australia. So, yeah, still time to challenge me. Take a, take a, a sip of hot water and uh, keep going. And yeah, it's a great it's a great site. Lots and lots of lessons and pawns wants to play. I will accept that. Um, what time control do we have? <clears throat> so five minutes. Nice long time control. Sixty nine viewers. I can't challenge you. Any idea why? Uh, no, I have no idea why. Maybe because I'm playing a game or I, I don't know, it's not coming up. You guys can see my screen. So, okay, what am I going to play? Okay, we'll play, we'll play London. London system, I am after all a Londoner. I have declared my intentions. Uh, okay, so you had to, okay, maybe I'll try to refresh after every single game that I play. It could be very well a fault of my own. Um, okay. This is one of the trendiest lines there is. So I'm going to pre-move this. And yeah, so the moves that he can play is he can play. I've seen knight h5 played. I haven't seen this move played actually. Hmm. I've seen normally they capture on d4 and then they play bishop f5. I wonder why. Okay, so. Okay, so let's take. Let's let's sorry, let's take. Let's put the pressure on this knight. And okay. Let's jump in. Now queen b6. I'm going to go a4. <clears throat> yeah. Um, ah, okay. Family in Queensland. Wow. It's so amazing how we have family all over the world. You know, before in, in like in past days, we would probably just have family in our local village. And now suddenly we're just like a global community. You have uh, relatives all over the world. I have relatives in, in Uruguay. I have relatives in the um, US well, and everywhere. It's awesome. Okay, so now, 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 now. I would like to, how does theory go? Take. Okay, I'm going to take that one first. <clears throat> I'm not so fussed about material. I just want rapid development. I might regret that decision. I, yeah, I might regret my decision to, ooh, ooh, you put, this must be a mouse slip. He's put uh, the queen in the same line as my bishop, which means only one thing. I'm going to play knight to g6 and grab that rook. Oh. Oh, I'm sorry, pawns, but thank you very much for the game. Yeah, queen b8 must have been a mouse slip. But uh, okay, I'm going to do this and I'm going to try to refresh and see if I can see all your challenges. So yeah, s8, and I can see a lot more now. S8, s8 and thanked and no, no, I can't figure out blue screen. I love the colors. No, 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 no. 
you've been playing lots of d4s today so let's play e4 do i enjoy play i love playing in gibraltar uh, i mean i do love playing chess uh, it's such a wonderful feeling just to sit there concentrate and when you win it's like the best feeling in the world when you lose it's a little bit disappointing and you just learn so much about yourself and I've said it again, Gibraltar has something very, very special about it. And I'm hoping that next year they will have the 20th anniversary and it will go ahead and be a big tournament and we can all, you know, get together and enjoy the winter sun. Aha. Uh -huh. <laughs> no, 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 no. Uh, okay. Sans. Okay, dark squares, bishops are off. I really do like getting off the dark square bishops because I'm just kind of saying that this king is a little bit extra weak. Um, so I'm going to take that off. It's a little bit weaker. So I'm going to go here. And then I don't care about this. I'm going to let him have superior queen side because I'm going to say my king side is so superior that is even worth having a bad bishop pawn storm pawn is going to come to b4 that doesn't care i don't mind knight's going to come back to d1 maybe to e3 i don't mind we will what did he do a5 okay, knight go knight to e3 and now my knight's going to go to g3 and i'm going to go g5 knight g4 and then we just get motoring. <clears throat> Knight g3. And now I just noticed a possibility. This tactical idea is to putting a knight on f5. Okay, now is time. Now is the time for me to go f5. And <clears throat> oh dear, I'm losing my voice. Um, da, 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 da. Pawn takes. <clears throat> You're on my half of the board. <clears throat> Get out. That's what I always say to any piece that's on my side. It's not yours. This is my property. It's private. Uh, have I ever played an Indonesian player? Yes, many times. Yes, <clears throat> yeah, I, I'm trying. But suddenly it's just gone super croaky. So you have to forgive me, I've got a frog in my throat. <clears throat> okay, now, now it's all good. Now I can do check and he has to give the queen. Yeah, <laughs> the bottle and some water has magically appeared on the desk. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you for the game. <laughs> and uh, caramelized turn now. Yeah, so the close Sicilian, you have to be very careful about allowing the exchange of dark square bishops and uh, if you do allow it, then you've got to be very, very quick with your queenside attack. Um, okay, so now d45. Now I'm going to play the Slav defense, semi Slav defense. Yeah. <laughs> Rescue. <laughs> yes, it got there just in time and saved the day. So thank you very much for. Mm hmm. Yeah, it is all about queenside counterplay. Or if you don't want to do queenside counterplay, you have to stop the dark square bishop from being exchanged. And then you play on, because you saw my bishop, my light square bishop is bad, but it doesn't, it doesn't really be, a, it's not a really, a, ugh, I'll get there. It's not really a problem in the middle game. It's a problem in the end game. So you should try to exchange off pieces. Okay, now Cambridge Springs. So there's a big trap in the position. 
And the big trap is I am going to play knight e4. That's the big idea. No Botvinnik, no. I don't know the theory. It's too wild, it's too crazy. So this is the nice, easy one. Okay, so this is this is the trap, right? You go knight here. I think you've fallen into the trap. You go knight here. And if he goes bishop takes knight, you go pawn takes, and then you're attacking the knight and the bishop. The queen is a long range piece. Yeah. Oh, well, you know, you can go. And yeah, you can still, you, you're still okay. I've messed it up. Anyway, three. Let's just play this. Um, do, 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 do. Like your opponent does know that Botvin in case a queen here. Yeah, I'm uh, doing my usual where I'm just being super greedy. After all, I have the two bishops. <clears throat> and I'm going to go queen takes pawn. I also think DC, yeah, I think DC4 is the move, and then you go bishop out to, yeah, you go DC4 and then knight to E4. Okay. I'm going to be greedy. I will for sure regret being greedy, but it is what it is. King safe. Well, his king is not safe either, so swings and roundabouts. Okay, okay, okay. You want to check? Um, to find my position. Okay, I'm being, I'm just being playing very provocatively because it's a blitz game and I can. But I'm sure everyone will disapprove of this. It's not to be tried at home. Okay, I wanted to get my light square bishop out. And I wanted to stop his king from castling and being all happy there, safe at home. I was like, no. If I have an unsafe king, you should also have an unsafe king. Um, okay. Um. Mm -hmm. King to f2, pawn takes, rook. Think, 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 think. OK, 
I'm going to close. I want to preserve my pawn structure. But this is coming with great risk. Yeah, thoughts on Carissa? Carissa's great. And Jennifer, you, I mean, Carissa really is improving gr tremendously. Uh, I must say most of the American youngsters are as well. Uh, I enjoy watching them play. I'm, I'm really impressed by how they, they're all confident, they're calm, they know that a knight e2. Um, you'll have to wait a second because I'm being a bit check. Sorry, I'm just going to look after my king and then I'll get back to you. Um, Mm. Not well done, Yvanka. Not well done. Um, maybe I have to just change off pieces. 57 seconds. Yeah, so I know I was, I really needed to look after my king. Sorry, I got a bit distracted because you see, I was just going to play king f7, but then I realized, uh oh, rook to d1 and then the rook to d7. This way, if the rook comes to d1, okay, I have some income to king e7. And cover, and, and okay, fine, this pawn goes, but whatever. We can't have everything in life. And he only has 30 seconds, and it's ticking down. Okay, we protect. I actually changed my mind. Yep. Okay, let's play here. Backward pawn and rooks behind pawns. And I won on time. But okay, that was a little bit of uh, risk and bluff there. Sorry about that. Uh, you do have some promising, isn't um There was a Chinese, there was a girl, um, she was very good, you, Yan Yang Lin, I think, but she, maybe she's not so young anymore. And uh, 24, you have a 2400, who's uh, quite promising, but maybe she's the streamer. So, okay, yeah, whoops, I will, I will pay attention more to chat these days. I got a bit sidetracked by the game. Okay, so I'm playing Fredo far. Okay, and it's my move. Okay, so let's play c4. And okay, let's play here. Let's play Catalan because it's all really trendy. Very trendy to play Catalans at the minute. Everyone is doing it. You need to take the pawn. And okay, yeah, you are young. Yeah, it's just okay. Yeah, not so sorry. Not so, yeah, you're right. You're not so young, but I think she was about 2400, right? Whoops. Um, sorry about that, Fredo. If I could give you a take back, I would, but you just dropped your queen. Uh, okay, okay. She beat me once, so I'm in the USA. Which, yeah, sorry about that. Um, okay, so I can take that. And 
Um, if Rex got his checkbook out, do you, and could you see yourself a true American? Um, well, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a Brit and uh, I, I am through and through. But one of the things I find really exciting about um, Rex Sinkfield's approach is that if he were to, um, so he's brought over a Levon Aronian, but if they have a strategy in place for how Levon can help the younger generation improve, and I know that the younger generation is incredibly strong, but if he can help them take them to the next level, then you kind of have this kind of like symbiotic effect where American justice gets better and better and better. So if, if I were part of that, I think I would probably say yes, you know, yeah, I would transfer, but only on the provisor that I could help. I could help the talent ex help establish um, a framework. But if I'm just there just kind of because I'm the top player and I'm just going to play Olympiads or whatever, then no. But I mean, if there's a plan in place, it's exciting. Uh, hello to the Shayedi. Okay. Uh, okay. Melif, Melif, Duo. Thank you, Pontius Pirate. Uh, I could never convert from. Yeah. I mean, that, that's the thing, you know. It, you, I think you can, you change federation for your own personal reasons. Okay. So last game, um, you guys can challenge me, and. Yeah, this is the last game of the day, and I'm playing play Shrey, 0-9, and Shrey, 1,000. But uh, my experience is that people who are 1,000 are not really 1,000. They're much stronger. Yeah, so, I mean, everyone will have their reasons. And I, I know plenty of my friends have changed federation. Maybe they moved to a new country. Or maybe things haven't worked out with their previous federations, which is a big pity. But uh, it is what it is. And uh, I personally, it would have to be the right motivation would be about helping the youth because I'm passionate about that. And especially the girls, if I could help the girls and if I could just, you know, I don't want to get them to my level. I want them to go much stronger than me. I want them to be grandmasters and I want them to be challenging for the world's best. And if I could be like part of establishing a structure of something like this, then that would be so exciting. Yeah, but Rex is actually doing something incredibly exciting. Um, he's kind of building up St. Louis as the capital of chess. And uh, St. Louis is his hometown, it's where he was born. And he's it's kind of this is also part of him giving back um, to the city because suddenly the city gets a lot of tourism from chess. Uh, it becomes known for chess, and he's built up a lot of these houses in downtown. And uh, I love that concept. I, I would do that in a heartbeat if I was a billionaire. I would go to the UK, and I would go to one of these cities, probably in the north, and I would make it a chess city. I would buy houses and uh, have chess houses and just build a really lovely, thriving community. I, I, I think that's just wonderful. It was, uh, I, I've, I've done some commentary a few times in St. Louis, and it's just been fantastic. You know, I got to work with Yasta and Alejandro and Christian, and incredible, incredible experience so lucky i say that a lot about my commentary but i mean i have been so so blessed to have worked with some of the best people and the nicest people and the most charismatic people you know david is a great guy great friend yes sir. he's incredible he's like the one of the the funniest people i know and uh incredibly also dangerous at blitz you know we would play blitz all afternoon and he would just he would beat me he'd beat Alejandro he'd beat uh Christian <laughs> we would all have turns and uh he would just keep going would I ever live in a chess house yes I absolutely would I would definitely live in a chess house it's exciting and to be in the company of other chess players other creatives it's I mean I, uh, <clears throat> When when can I start living in this chess house? 
I mean, there's rumors in China that they have a chess house where the strongest players all live together. They study together. Now, this is kind of maybe urban lift, urban legend, but uh, I think it's a great idea. I mean, you improve by working as a group, training as a group, and playing chess in tournaments as a group. It's kind of, we have this kind of idea in the UK that you have to be a lone wolf. You don't have to be a lone wolf. No other country is a lone wolf. You're all training with your friends. In Norway, the Norwegians are really dangerous because they go and study chess at their clubs and they all have like these big debates. You know, when I published my book um, for the first time, uh, there were quite a few Karakan players up in northern Norway and they had huge debates as to whether this line was good, whether it was fine. They would analyze it together and uh, they would come with different engines. And I think that this is what makes chess a lot of fun. Okay, um, I don't want you to close the position down, so I'm going to open it up. <clears throat> yeah, okay, Perry Gill says, that's how Chinese Go students have been studying for decades. Yeah, it is, it's the magic formula. Find yourself some friends and then just get working. Someone that you have good chemistry and you'll have so much fun. And before you know it, you would have been able to study chess for hours and hours and it hasn't felt like a chore at all whatsoever. Bishop E2 was better than Queen E2. Oh, did I, did I uh, blunder? I, it, I might have been inaccurate. So now I'm going to bring my rook into the game. And I won on time. And uh, yeah, I would like to thank everybody here, everyone in the chat for playing against me. Thank you, Shrey09. And uh, thank you for being part of this evening. I've had a wonderful time. I've enjoyed chatting with you all. And uh, yeah, have a fantastic evening or day or afternoon, wherever you are in the world. And Thank you so much and have a good one and uh, see you in the next stream. Bye bye. Hello, everybody. I'm International Master Sopika Goramishvili. Anish Giri. Elizabeth Pitts. Lavan Aronian. Frank Hauska. Maxime Vachelagrave. To improve as a chess player, you need to get used to recognizing patterns. This was uh, one of those uh, lessons.